What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm going to try to persuade you not to buy a copper banded butterfly and I'm going to suggest a load of alternatives for you to look at instead. Now if you're new to the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get to it. Whenever you go into your local fish shop, the chances are you will see several copper banded butterfly fish. So stunning are they with their laterally compressed bodies and unique colourings that you can't help but be mesmerised by their beauty. You'll ask the shopkeeper what they're like to keep, at which point you'll hear words like finicky and fussy eaters, and maybe a comment that they'll be okay if you have Aptasia in your tank. You'll then go home and start researching, and I can tell you the two stages of research you'll go through. During the first stage, you'll read a few brief articles and find a few stories on forums. You'll learn that copper bands have a poor survival rate, that they're only suited to expert aquarists, and that half the time they don't even eat Aptasia. And drawbacks like that are enough to put anyone off, so there will end stage one. Then a few months later, you'll have seen dozens more copper bands in your local fish shop, maybe a couple of photos on Instagram, and the odd video here on YouTube. And you'll start wondering if they're really that bad, which is when stage two starts. Stage two is the dangerous stage, when without realizing, you stop looking objectively and start looking for reasons why you should get one. You'll find respectable articles online or in books that, among all of the warnings, tell you it can be done. Then you'll find people on forums or YouTube who've had long-term success. And at that point, you're hooked. You'll have read that a tank filled with mature live rock with a supply of Aptasia, fanworms and amphipods will make a great home. Or you'll read that putting them in quarantine will allow them time to get used to prepared foods. And that garlic infused brine shrimp will entice them to start eating. Or that Easy Reef Mastic is a wonder food that copper bands simply can't get enough of. And because you've done thorough research, you'll also have a plan B. You'll feed your tank heavily when you first add the fish, you'll have a varied supply of live food, maybe even blood worms and clams in a half shell. Then you'll see a stunning specimen in your local fish shop. It's just the right size, not too big, not too small, and it's even eating frozen food. And before you know it, he's in a bag in the back of your car, on his way to your aquarium. And only then, when you've gone through all of that, and still found the fish dead a month later, will you understand just how tricky these guys are to keep. Nobody knows what the survival rate for these beautiful fish is, but most won't last more than a few weeks, and I wouldn't be surprised if 90% die within 6 months, and even fewer get anywhere near full maturity. In the wild, they live for up to 10 years, and if that's not enough of a guilt trip for you, they also form bonded pairs and live together. Now I'm not saying they're impossible to keep, some people do keep them successfully, so that's obviously not the case. But the overwhelming majority of these guys die as juveniles, and I just wish we'd stop importing them. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I recently bought a copper band for my 100 gallon tank, and I'm really annoyed at myself for doing so. I've been through stage 2 of copper band research a dozen times since I've been in the hobby. But this time I convinced myself it was worth a try, despite knowing better. And that was my third attempt over the years. The first died in quarantine, the second died in my display tank surrounded by Aptasia, fanworms and a variety of live food, and the most recent one ate happily every day for three weeks, then stopped feeding suddenly for no apparent reason, and died the next day. So every time you get to the end of stage two, just come back and watch this video again. And in a hobby with an endless variety of shapes, colours and characters, there are dozens of alternatives. The yellow long-nosed butterfly has a far better success rate in captivity and shares the copper band's stunning shape. Then there are the supposedly reef-safe options like the Mitratus and Burgessi butterfly if you really must have a butterfly fish. And I've come close to buying those before, but I'm not quite prepared to take the risk that they won't chomp through my LPS. If you've got a big enough tank, you could even go for a small group of pyramid butterflies, which are the most reef safe butterfly fish in the hobby, and not exactly an ugly option. Looking for centerpiece fish away from butterflies takes us to the flame angel, and while they're still a bit of a coin toss when it comes to eating corals, keeping them well fed and avoiding keeping them with fleshy LPS corals like acans will give you the best chance of success. And there are plenty of specimens out there that have been model citizens for years. The Japanese masked swallowtail angel is another stunning centerpiece alternative. And not only are these guys beautiful, they're also far more likely to be reef safe, and you can even keep a male female pair together. But if none of those takes your fancy, a quick browse of liveaquaria.com or a visit to your local fish shop will always turn up something spectacular to suit everyone's eye. There's just so much choice in this hobby that it shouldn't be necessary to choose a fish that's all but guaranteed to die in a matter of weeks. 
So those are my thoughts on why you shouldn't get yourself a copper banded butterfly. But I'd love to know what your guys' experiences are, so let me know in the comments section below whether you've had success or failures, and also let me know what you think about in terms of alternatives. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.